What's up you guys? It is Kaylee. I'm back with another What Sold from last week video. Very excited to share some more sales with you guys. I feel like I have been in the same sold range for the last several weeks and it just doesn't seem to nudge. The only thing that's really changed is that we are now focusing on trying to increase our average sale price, which a lot of resellers are. Why wouldn't you? If you can, why not? Less work, same amount of money. So we're trying to actually list the same amount of items while still increasing ASP. And I'm starting to see those results in my sales week to week. So let's dive in and I'll share with you some of those higher valued sales and some brands that you might wanna look for. I was told last time that I needed to put a disclaimer in my videos that said, um, yeah, these are brands you should look for, but sell at your own risk. And I just kind of thought that that was a given, uh, but maybe it's not. So if you're watching anything on YouTube, you know, not just reseller related, but like DIY, stunts, it's anything like that. Um, everything should be at your own risk and make sure to do your own research and form your own opinions. So I'm not going to go too much in detail on this, but as you can see, these sales are from August 20th through the 26th, finishing out August pretty decently. And like I said, just kind of the same as the previous weeks in August. I do expect September to bump up a little bit, so we'll see how that goes. In total, I sold 231 items for a gross sales total of $6,069.54. Those are just the item sales, doesn't include what I received for shipping. And then that made my average item sale price $27.57. Um, I sold 135 on eBay and 96 items on Poshmark. You can see that we sold significantly less gross sales wise on Poshmark, which tends to be true because eBay is usually uh, my biggest seller and my main platform. So let's dive in to some of these sales. <clears throat> So this first one, there's actually a couple of them that do not have a 100% sell through rate, but I thought I would share them with you today because I took a risk on them. I'll tell you why, but they might be brands you want to look for. Just as always, make sure you're looking stuff up with those factors. Um, I think this one sold for how much it did because it is a longer length cardigan and it's a size extra large. So the brand is Testimony Los Angeles which wasn't a brand that I had heard of before, and they retail for quite a bit. Um, I would say it had about a 50% sell-through rate. However, I was looking that up in summer, so maybe it'll have 100% sell-through rate in fall and winter. Um, but I would say definitely a brand worth looking into if you come across it. I did notice that these waterfall kind of draping cardigans seem to be the ones that were selling for quite a bit. Uh, we picked this up for $3.99 and listed it for $65. It did sell for our full asking price. Next up is a sale I've been sitting on for a while now, and I think we just originally priced it way too high. Um, this is the brand Diesel, which is a fantastic men's brand of jeans that I would definitely look for. I think the reason we priced these up so high was because when we looked up the style, which was divider carrot jeans, uh, we couldn't find much information on it. And this is, we found these new tags. So priced them just high and was accepting best offer just to kind of let the market decide. They did end up sitting for a little while and I ended up accepting an offer of $65 for them. But I did want to share with you guys this brand once more because it can be a really, really fantastic brand to pick up. And depending on the style that you come across, um, some of them are a little bit more rare and can go for some more money, even pre-owned. Next up is another blazer. I've just been so excited about all the blazer sales and you guys seem to be pretty interested in what is selling within the blazers category for both men's, women's, and sometimes kids. Um, and it's just really a new category to me that has been very profitable. So I thought I would share another one of those sales. This is a Zara women's blazer. It is a size large and it's kind of more of a lightweight blazer. I don't pick up a lot of Zara anymore, but I will say that in the past I have sold quite a bit of their blazers and they usually perform pretty well for me. This one's just a viscose blend. It is lighter colored and you can see it is kind of longer length. I'd almost, I know this isn't the proper term, but it's very similar to like a boyfriend cardigan where they're slightly longer, um, a little bit more relaxed. Those seem to be the styles that are doing pretty well. 
Um, we paid just under five for this and listed it for $75. We sent offers to watchers and someone accepted an offer of around $64 for this. So really good, really good profits on a Zara blazer and for something that I consider kind of a I don't know, is Zara fast fashion? I kind of think it it's leaning towards that these days. Um, but their blazers do pretty good and they do have some blogger favorites that also perform well. Next up is a brand I just learned about. It is Gary Graham. And Gary Graham is a designer brand. Um, it says abstract vintage here. So I guess that's what they go for. This was 100% silk. Um, you can see it's a very interesting piece. I could not find anything like this in the comp section, so I kind of had to make up a price. This was another one that did not have 100% sell-through rate, but the ones that I were, that I did see uh, that were selling for, for <laughs> quite a bit within the last 90 days, um, they seem to be performing well. So even though I think I want to say it had like a 60% sell through rate, um, like I said, the ones that were selling were selling for a bit. So I did take a chance on it. And worse comes to worse, if the item I have, you know, starts sitting, I can always drop the price to get it to move more quickly. And when you have something that, you know, has this much value in it, um, you can do that. You can drop the price and still make money. So this one I paid $15 for, which is, you know, a little bit up there. Uh, we listed it for 85 and it actually sold pretty quickly. I was surprised at this for an offer to watcher of $72.15. So very good, quick flip. And I'm glad I took the chance on that. Gary Graham, if you come across it, definitely worth looking at. All right, next up, actually the next two sales, I believe, are both kind of a factor that I would look for. It is all over sequin. I've talked about this before, but I've had some pretty good all over sequin sales lately. So this is the brand Torrid. I did find this new with tags, although had I found it pre-owned, I still would have gotten it as long as the sequins were in good condition. So this was called the Madison sequin dress, or not dress, shirt. This one was a 3X, which is a larger size in Torrid. Um, and you can see it retails for about 80 bucks, which is crazy good. I actually listed this for $65, which is pretty darn close to the retail price. And it sold very quickly on an offer to watcher for $55. So very good flip. Um, I do attribute it to the all over sequin. The sequins are just... Um, more of a unique find for somebody. There aren't a lot of all over sequin items out there compared to, uh, you know, just regular fabric. So it is worth looking up if you come across it. I find it to be very, very valuable. <clears throat> all right, here's another all over sequin one. This is a free people pair of joggers and they are all over sequin. And I thought this was just gorgeous. I didn't even look up the style. I just got it when I found it because I was like, it's free people. It's all over sequin. They are joggers. They're going to do well. So later on, we looked up the style. They're called the Mor Morelia sequin joggers. Uh, we actually paid up for this. I paid $13 for these. We listed them for around 50 and they did sell for our full asking price. So all over sequins, once again, just wanted to throw that out there. People are also going to be going to a lot of... Uh, like holiday parties, cocktail parties coming up soon. And this is typically when this kind of stuff sells. <clears throat> you guys have to excuse me clearing my throat. I am uh, still recovering from being sick. So this next one is a brand I just learned about. It is called Nap. And I have like, my eyes have been opened up to this brand. I don't think I've ever come across it myself. I've only received it in wholesale um, so wherever they're shopping, they're finding quite a bit of it, but this seems to be a pretty good, uh, bolo brand for like loungewear, sleepwear kind of thing. Um, I found more information about it on Poshmark, honestly, than I did on eBay and, uh, based my comps off of that. <coughs> and these are a pair of cashmere jogger sweatpants and anything 100% cashmere or cashmere blend, or maybe even merino wool that are like loungewear pants, I always, always, always look up. It doesn't seem to matter the brand. I've sold it in Express. 
I've sold it, I think, in Banana Republic, and they always sell for quite a bit of money. So definitely want to keep your eye out for good material like loungy pants, and this is definitely a brand worth looking for. So this one, I did have to put a little bit of love into it. It had some issues, but we got them fixed. Um, I paid $5 for these, listed them for $60. They sold on an offer to Watcher for around $51. So very good return on investment. And I would say that a lot of these pieces might be hidden in the sleepwear section, the intimates category of your thrift store which again is a place a lot of people pass on, but don't pass on it because you can find these hidden gems in there. All right, the next one is also a new brand to us. We found this piece um, in that Goodwill opening that we did a haul for, fantastic piece. And I wanted to pull this up because if you see any kind of chunky, very thick cable knit sweater, I would definitely just automatically look it up. It's probably pretty valuable and these are like really good bolos in fall and winter. So Nikki came across this, saw how thick it was, saw the cable in it and picked it up to look into it further. So the brand is called Patrick Erville and it also says Aran sweater or Aaron sweater, um, which if you've sold any uh, sweaters like this in the past, a lot of these brands have that word Aran or Aaron. I'm honestly not sure uh, where that stems from. I think it's like an Irish term. I'm just making stuff up, but that's what I've deduced. So if you have any information about that, let me know. But I have noticed that a lot of them have uh, this word in it. But Patrick Erville, definitely a sweater brand that we're going to look for. So if you come any across anything super thick like this and all over chunky cable knit, um, it's probably pretty valuable. This one did have a couple of flaws, but it was 100% baby alpaca. And that is a fantastic material that people look for. Um, so we picked it up even with the flaws. Picked this up for $4.99. It listed it for $50. It did sell for our full asking price. And that is a fantastic sale. Next up is another category we've been dabbling in and doing pretty well in. It is, uh, I guess I would call them horseback riding pants. People call them breeches. I've also heard of jodhpurs, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm honestly not sure if there's a difference between all of those words, but these are like equestrian horseback riding pants. And there are a few brands that do pretty well. These ones are Ariat. They're the Pro Series. I do believe these had a 100% sell-through rate, as do most of the Breaches lines. Um, we paid $4.99 for this, and we listed it for $45. It did sell for our full asking price. And you'll know that they're horseback riding pants because they typically have seams that look like this, or they'll have like a patch of leather in the like knee, sometimes thigh area as well. Um, and you can tell that they are for horseback riding. All right, next up is a brand I'm not sure if I've shared with you guys before. It is Grayson, G-R-A-Y-S-O-N for those of you just listening. This is a fantastic brand to look for and I just learned that this brand is actually um, by Frank and Eileen, which we all know is an awesome brand as well. Um, so I thought it was cool to learn that that's where that came from. This is just a butterfly linen button-up shirt. Um, Grayson shirts like this look very similar to the Frank and Eileen ones, no surprise, and they go for quite a bit of money and have a really good following. We paid five, listed it for 50, and it did sell for our full asking price. Next up is a, another brand that is passed on quite frequently, but it's definitely a bolo. It is Spencer Alexis. And the only reason we even came across this brand is because I told my team, if you see something super wacky and crazy, just look it up. <laughs> because more often than not, it is like an art wear brand and it has a following. So this is how we came across this brand. And this is, they're known for like their uh, kimono tops like this. So like kind of like an open jacket. And they are very very wacky art to wear looking. Um, some are even more colorful than this. And like I said, they have a really great following. Um, this one actually had the size tag ripped out there, but on the inner tag, it actually also included the size. So 
you ever come across it where it doesn't have it right on the neck label, sometimes it's also printed on the material tag. So this one was a 3X, which significantly increased its value. Um, we paid $3.99 for it and listed it for $50. We sent out offers to watchers and it ended up selling for $42. Great return on investment, especially for something a lot of people would just pass over. Next up is another brand that uh, retails for a ton but doesn't have the best sell-through rate. And this is another one that I took a chance on. It is the brand Margaret O'Leary. Uh, you can see there's an issue there, but here is the brand label. And very thick, really nice sweater. I would say this brand does have a following, but only for specific pieces. This is a sweater, so I think we listed it like just at the right time as we're moving into the appropriate season. We paid five for it and listed it for 40. It did sell for our full asking price. And I've seen some other pieces go for more than that. But like I said, not 100% sell through rate on the whole brand. Next up is kind of a niche little thing that I realized. It is Toad & Co. Wide Leg Pants, which I didn't know Toad & Co. had like some pieces that were pretty good, but in general, this brand's kind of hit or miss. Um, but these wide leg pants are called their Chaka pants. And I think it actually, yeah, it actually says it on the inside. It's like one of their newer styles. So Chaka wide leg pant, and these have a great sell through rate. This one actually had a small hole in the back of the leg and it's still sold for quite a bit. We paid five for this, listed it for 50 with that hole. It ended up selling pretty quickly on an offer to watcher for $42, um, even with that flaw. And I saw some of these going for as high as like $75, depending on size, print, and everything like that. So Toad & Co. Wide Leg Pants, specifically the Chaka style, are definitely now a bolo for me. All right. This is an oldie but a goodie. It is Jamie Sadock. This is her line Sunsense. And in general, I've seen this brand Jamie Sadock kind of taper off in certain categories, but these Sunsense tops still perform well. We found this new with tags. It is um, sun protection, which, you know, any anything SPF, UPF um, was doing really well this summer. So definitely picked this up. It retails for $88.00. Usually they have some pretty wacky uh, colorways to them. This was also a size large, so I think that helped to sell it even faster. We paid $4.99 for it, listed it for $45. It did sell for our full asking price. So definitely keep your eye out for Jamie Sadock pieces, especially the Sunsense line. All right, this one has been a pretty good bread and butter brand for us. However, it has to be like very specific. So Plus size for sure in this brand is a must. Um, their liquid knit items are their best selling items. I can usually only get 20 to 25 for them. However, I came across this velvet wrap top and those are just two factors that can add value. So especially it being a wrap top that tends to add value in pretty much anything. Um, so I went ahead and looked this up even though it wasn't the liquid knit. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by the comps. We paid just over $4 for this, listed it for around 30. It did sell for our full asking price, which is quite a bit for Susan Graver. So really pay attention to the factors that you have. I just put out that factor stacking video. So hopefully that helps you guys be able to comp better with factors, um, but they can make a huge difference in your comps. All right, next up is just a fun little sale that I thought I would share. You guys know I love, 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 love selling t-shirts because they are so stinking easy to list. And it's also just fun to find the vintage ones. This one's not vintage. It's from 2016, but it looked pretty old. It was the X-Files I thought it was a pretty cool graphic. Um, I did some comp research on this. I saw that the X-Files t-shirts were doing pretty good and I could not find um, any exactly like mine, which told me that I ha might have a little bit more of a rare one. So I picked this up for $4.99, listed it for $35, which is usually what I'll sell a more modern 
um, graphic t-shirt that I think has value. My safe space is like 35 bucks. So that's why I listed this. It did have a lot of cracking on the graphic. As you can see, it was in um, just good shape. Not great, not excellent, just good. Um, and it still sold for my full asking price of $35. So I was really happy with taking the chance on that. And I feel like learning t-shirts and graphics is something that takes resellers like a really long time to figure out what works because there are so many of them out there. So I just like sharing these sales with you guys in hopes that maybe you'll pick up on a few things. Um, but definitely pop culture is, you know, anything really popular, TVs, movies, music, uh, anything like that is definitely going to add a lot of value. This would be an example of one um, that is modern that sells well. All right, next is one of my new favorite brands. It is Outer Known. And this is kind of an outdoorsy, sportswear-ish kind of brand that I just recently learned about. And they have a really fantastic sell-through rate. So I would definitely keep your eye out for this. Um, I actually listed these for around $45. These are swim shorts. Um, and down here is their little logo as well. Um, so the only reason these are discounted which I probably should have paid a little bit more attention to because um, I do think I could have gotten $45 for this. I knew that we were moving into fall and winter and I discounted my entire store in certain categories, shorts being one of them and swim being one of them um, and did 30% off. So that's why the price dropped to 31 to 42. It is no surprise that with 30% off and a really hot selling brand, that someday snatches up like immediately, but I'm still happy with that sale. Um, I'm still learning, you know, how to go about dropping prices for stuff and, you know, all of that seasonality. Um, so this was kind of a mistake on my part, but is it a mistake if it sells quickly and you're still making money? Not really. We paid $4.99 for this and it sold for around $31 versus the 45, but still very happy with that sale. All right, next up is a polo by Ralph Lauren men's shirt. Um, and what I've noticed is that Hawaiian stuff in polo Ralph Lauren men's items tend to perform extremely well. This was also a size XXL, which really helped to increase the value. Um, so really happy with this sale. And I've just been kind of picking these up and pricing them. Um, just making up a price because there's not a lot of information on them. And I've noticed if they're a larger size, you can at least get $35 for them. I've sold them all the way up to 50. Um, but Polo Ralph Lauren Hawaiian stuff is definitely a factor worth looking into if you come across it in the men's department. We paid $350 for this, listed it for $35. It sold for full asking price. Next up is another vintage t-shirt. Um, this one we priced way too high in the beginning and ended up accepting an offer for, but I thought I would share this with you guys as well because it's another good like bread and butter t-shirt. Very interesting uh, Nutmeg Mills vintage t-shirt. Here are some of the tags. Chicago Bulls. And we ended up getting $30 for this, paid $2.99. And I thought $30 was pretty good for a t-shirt. Next up is a soft surroundings dress. This is one of my favorite brands to sell in the larger departments. Um, I do think that the larger the size, the better in this. And then mini and maxi length dresses seem to perform pretty well. Um, this we labeled as a knee length dress, but with the asymmetric hem, I would consider it a midi. Nonetheless, it sold pretty quickly for us. We paid $5 and it sold for our full asking price of $35. Next up is a pair of shorts. We must have sold this right before I uh, dropped prices for that sale. So this is a Lululemon women's speed short. There are not a lot of women's shorts that are performing well still. Um, Lululemon is pretty much one of the only ones that I can think of that are still performing well, but I do love finding them. Um, this is a size six. It's called the speed up short. And for the Lululemon shorts, I find the average, a good average sale price for those pre-owned are usually around $35. So still fitting within 
um, my higher ASP range. We paid three for this and it did sell for our full asking price of $35. Next up is a brand I love getting, especially in linen. It is CP Shades, and this brand label is really hard uh, to see because typically it is the same color as the background, um, but if you keep your eye out for it, they are very valuable uh, depending on size and depending on material. They also make some like rayon stuff, which I think also sell pretty well. So this is a women's specific uh, style called Romy or Romy 100% linen button up shirt. And this style had a really good sell through rate. We paid five, listed it for around 40 and it did sell for our full asking price. Next up is a Title IX dress. This is another brand that is still performing really well for us in the women's category. So Title IX size large women's athletic wear dress. There aren't a lot of brands anymore that sell well in athletic dresses, um, but Title IX is an exception to that, and I still pick these up. So very purple. It looks like this was called the Dream Dress, also a size large, going to help to increase its value. Paid $4.99, listed it for $40, and it did sell for our full asking price. All right, next up is a pajama set, and I can't remember if I paid $5 for each piece or $5 for the set, so I paid $5 or $10, which I know is a bigger range, but this is a pair of Intimately Free People pajama set, satin, extra small, um, and these seem to be performing pretty well. Again, another example of why you shouldn't pass on the sleepwear section. And we listed these for 40. They sold for our full asking price, um, which is pretty good for pajamas. All right, moving on to Poshmark and finishing up with these sales. Here's another Title IX. This is actually a pair of women's shorts. So another brand that's still performing well in women's shorts. This one was a size 10. They were called the Beach Rogue Shorts. They sold for $33 on Posh. I paid just over five. And next up is, actually in this, there's going to be a lot of like, I would consider them mall brands, bread and butter brands in the Poshmark stuff, because in my opinion, that's what sells well on Poshmark, um, but certain pieces within those brands that perform well. So you're about to see a lot of examples of those. This is a Madewell women's coverall romper. It was very thick. Uh, we actually picked this up, I believe, also in that Goodwill grand opening um, found lots of great stuff there and did not do comps on this. Just picked it up just because it felt really nice. And I'm glad I did. It ended up selling for $34 on Poshmark. I would say overalls, coveralls, longer length dresses and made well are still performing well for me. But the rest of them I'm kind of skeptical on for this brand. Next up is Free People, another brand I'm kind of skeptical of these days. But I do know that there are still specific pieces that sell well, just got to pay attention to the factors. These are a pair of wide leg gauzy pants. They were called the Lulu pants. Um, we paid $5 for these, listed them, I think originally at $45 on Poshmark and accepted an offer of $38, um, which is great for free people. This was also something I picked up in that Goodwill grand opening. It is a Rachel Parcel dress. This is a new brand to me. I just learned about this designer. And I would definitely keep your eye out for this. Um, they did have a really good following. I believe the sell-through rate was pretty good. Um, and they were going for quite a bit. So this is a really pretty long sleeve, like floral, uh, yellow and white dress. Very springy. Um, and it just felt high quality. So we took a chance on it. I only paid $4.99 for it at that Goodwill. And oh, this was new with defects. Sorry, that just caught my attention. Oh, it's missing the belt. So we found it new with tags, but it was missing its original belt. Uh, with those defects, we listed it around $90 on Posh, except an offer of $80. And this one actually did sell pretty quickly. Next up is a brand I would definitely look for during fall and winter. It is Ibex. They make a lot of great wool pieces. 
This is a women's wide leg pant size large. And we paid $4.89 for this. It ended up selling for $49 on Poshmark. I do think that we probably could have gotten more, but I know we listed these in the middle of summer and have since dropped the price. So you might be able to get more for it. It's definitely a brand to look out for um, in the winter months. Next up is a new brand to me as well. And pretty much anything cashmere I'm looking up these days, it is Plus Barrel. B-E-R-Y-L-L. -L. First time uh, hearing about this, it is a cashmere poncho. Um, and probably regardless of brand, I would have picked it up. But this brand seems to have a pretty good following, particularly for this piece. We paid around $350 for this, listed it for, I think, actually $60 on Poshmark and accepted an offer of $45. Here's another example of Madewell pieces that are still performing well. It is a midi dress. And this one we actually found new with tags, so obviously that helped to increase the value. It's also a size large. We listed this for um, around $85 and accepted the offer of $65 for this just to get it moving. As we are moving uh, out of the summer months, I don't want it to end up sitting until next year but I still think that's a pretty good return on investment at 65. This was a very style-based pickup. I got this in wholesale for about five bucks plus shipping. It is a vintage steer brand uh, poncho. It's almost like a bib or a mini poncho. It sits on top of your shoulders. It does not cover all of you like most ponchos do, um, but I thought it was a pretty interesting piece. Definitely very Western um, inspired. Put a lot of keywords in there. We listed it for around $45 on Poshmark, accepted an offer of $35. And anything like this that's leather, uh, super Western, I'm probably going to pick up just because it's a really popular aesthetic right now. Here's another Zara item that is still performing well for us. We've actually sold two of these recently. Um, this one, I believe we only paid three bucks for. It is called the Boogie Pant. So specifically, the style is performing well. Um, and it's no surprise because they're like wide leg, baggy, they're high rise, like all the good things. Um, and these are a neon green one. We listed them for around 50 on Poshmark. They ended up selling for an offer of $40, which is fantastic for Zara. All right, next up is a J. Crew piece, also a mall brand, very hit or miss, but the things that seem to sell very well in this brand are the longer length dresses and their blazers. Uh, we paid five for this. This was called the J. Crew Dobby Midi Dress. I think we originally listed this for around 40 bucks on Poshmark and I accepted an offer of $28. Again, I don't really wanna hold out on my summer items because I might end up sitting on them for till the next year. Um, so I'm happy to accept a very reasonable offer like $28. Here's another J. Crew item that sold. This is a linen blend uh, wrap. I would call this a sweater, not really a cardigan, but we put cardigan in the title. Um, this sold for 25 bucks. Definitely kind of bread and butter, um, only selling for 25 bucks. However, I wanted to show you guys a sale because last year this was a very popular sweater style um, with the like continual wraparound. And I saw a lot of people using the keyword ballerina. Um, I did not review this listing, otherwise I probably would have added that keyword into it. But sold a lot of sweaters in this style last year, included the keyword ballerina, and they were doing pretty good. So these all, like, again, multiple wraparound sweaters with the longer ties, uh, I would definitely keep your eye out for. Next item is actually a kid's item. I talked about this a lot last year, but a lot of people pass on the kid's section, and in general, I don't go through the entire kids section, but something I do look for in fall and winter is I'll just kind of glance down the aisle and see if there are any puffer coats um, because some of the kids pieces actually sell more for more than the adult pieces in the same brands, which is crazy to me. So this is an L.L. Bean kids quilted puffer coat. You can see it's got a little bit of wear to it. Um, I listed this for, I think, around 40 on Poshmark. Paid $5.99 for it. It sold for $32, um, which is really great for a kid's item. I have sold all kinds of kids' coats, and the brands that are good in 
the adults are typically the same brands that are good in the kids section. And that's just a little tip for you to supplement your sales is to just glance down the aisle, see if there are any popular brands in nice jackets in the kids section. Next up is another brand that does not have 100% sell through rate. I would say it's about 50%, but the ones that are selling are selling for quite a bit and some pieces have a following. It's Jill Sander, which is a designer. Jill is spelled J-I-L. Um, and this is just a women's black short sleeve button up top. Um, we paid five bucks for this. I listed for around 45 on Poshmark and accepted an offer of $34. Um, I could have priced higher and waited longer, but since that sell-through rate was so low, I aimed for the lower tier of the comps. This is uh, kind of a bolo. I love the brand Sundance, but I will say that most of their pieces don't sell if they're smaller size. It really depends on what it is. Size large seems to be their best selling size for me. Large and extra large are like where it's at. The sell through rate significantly increases. So if you see anything Sundance large or extra large, I would definitely pick it up. This is just a floral long sleeve women's blouse. I paid $4.49 for this, listed it for I think around $50 on Poshmark and accepted an offer of $38, which is crazy good for a pre on top. Next up is a brand I pick up in everything I find because it just has such a great following. It is Reformation, and I say this a lot, but Reformation to me does not feel super high quality. So I'm sure before learning about this brand, I was passing on it um, until I knew what the label looked like just because it felt like anything else to me. But I'm telling you now in case... Uh, you want to pick up this brand. It does have a really fantastic following and can sell for a lot of money. This is just a women's uh, pre-owned like crop top blouse. We paid $4.99, listed it for $35 on Poshmark. It sold very quickly for $30, um, which again is very good for a pre-owned top. And like I said, I pick up pretty much anything in this brand reformation. All right, next up is something a little bit outside of my comfort zone. It is a hard goods item. This is a Manduka, um, and I just thought it was really interesting. Yoga mat carrying bag. <laughs> and this one actually did have a 100% sell through rate. They were only going for about 25 bucks from what I could tell on comps, um, but they were very consistent. So I thought, what the heck, I'll try it and dip my toes back into the hard goods. Paid $4.99 for this. We listed it for, I think, $35 on Poshmark just to account for offers, except an offer of $28. And I was really surprised to see this sell on Posh. And lastly is a shoe wear brand that I learned about last year. Um, and sold really, really well for us last year. So I thought I would share it. It is Kamik or Kamik, K-A-M-I-K. And they make these like rain looking winter boots. And to be honest with you, I didn't realize that they were a good brand until I finally did a comp on one of them. And I was like, oh, they have 100% sell three and they're doing fantastic. So here is the brand for you. Maybe I can click into that. There we go. Here's the brand. I really only noticed it on the bottom of the shoe and almost all of their boots have this style to them and certain like prints and colors uh, can do even better, but they sell for quite a bit and I was really surprised with these. So these ones we paid $6.99 for. These are called the Sienna Lace Up Winter Boots. Um, I think we originally listed these for $75 on Poshmark. It was towards uh, the beginning of summer. We've since dropped the price. They ended up selling now for 55, but this is definitely a brand I am going to look for uh, for fall and winter. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Hope you are learning some new brands. I'm a little hoarse today. I'm losing my voice, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm gonna get off here. See you in the next one. Bye.